Hi, I'm John Hale, Director of Sustainable Investing Research at Morningstar, and with me today is Lisa Wohl, CEO of US CIF, the Forum for Sustainable and Responsible Investing, who is ha having their annual conference in Chicago this week. Lisa, welcome. Thanks, John. It's great to be here. Great to be at Morningstar and great to be in Chicago. Well, good to have you here. Um, tell us a little bit about the conference. What's the main theme of the conference? Well, the theme, which we chose probably about 10 months ago, is a new climate for investing in impact. And the idea of it was to talk about climate change as a primary issue, although not the only issue, as well as we knew we'd have a new administration. I don't think we knew 10 months ago how apt the title would be in terms of the sort of tsunami of change uh, that we anticipate may be coming, mm -hmm. um, both on climate and on many other issues that mm -hmm. we care about. Mm -hmm. So uh, w what would you say is the uh, main impact so far of the new administration on, um, you know, the sustainable investing climate, I guess sure, you could call it. Sure, the landscape. It, yeah. So I, I always think about that in two buckets because when we put out our trends report last November, it was right after the election, and the first question I got from journalists is, what is the impact of, of this election? And the truth is, given the growth in sustainable or ESG assets over the last several years, I think no matter who was elected, we would have continued to see that growth. Mm -hmm. There's just tremendous interest. So I don't think that this administration will have a dilatorious effect on it. In fact, I think it might have a positive effect on ESG investing because um, this administration will close off in many ways the federal government as a place to go for environmental and social advances. Mm -hmm. And so what you're left with really is the private sector mm -hmm. and states. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, it may drive more investment into this space, which we're hearing uh, sort of from different asset managers because people are concerned about ways they can affect issues that they care about. Mm -hmm. And on the policy front, we're sort of dealing with every day is a new issue we have to address. And so we've really moved into sort of more of a defensive mode in terms of keeping things going that we care about. Mm -hmm. Climate initi initiatives moving forward, Dodd-Frank not being pulled back, um, those sorts of issues, making sure the SEC continues to function for investors and the shareholder process <laughs> continues. So there's multiple impacts, but the ESG growth we're not concerned about, the policy piece we're more concerned about. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very interesting because it seems like the, the catalyst in many ways for uh, the heightened, level, heightened levels of interest in sustainable investing, say, over the last 10 years or so, have right. been the financial crisis and Correct. climate Climate change. Right. Financial crisis, climate change, another issue that people really use in the shareholder process is political contributions as a result mm. of Citizens United. Mm. And so I, I think that the interest in climate, the fact that we've already pulled or pulled back from the Clean Power Plan, that an announcement on pulling back or out of Paris is imminent, we're told is really going to push more investors into d looking at clean energy and alternatives mm -hmm. in the investment process mm -hmm. because there will not be a national framework on climate in the next four years. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we've heard a lot about the or, of the phrase um, or the term impact mm -hmm. in con con in the context of sustainable investing. What, what is what is meant by that? Well, I think what's happening is um, the field for the last 25 years has been focused on impact. So whether you're working in the public equity markets and screening in companies who are the better actors or screening out bad actors or bringing a shareholder resolution, you're making impact. Mm -hmm. um, what's happened in the last few years is that you've had more emphasis on other asset classes. So fixed income, private equity, which we think is fantastic because we think sustainable <coughs> or impact investing should be able to be done across a whole portfolio. Um, and impact really just means how do you invest to make social and environmental change. And, um, and the word impact has been taken up in the last couple of years, which we use as well, and we take it to mean really the same thing as mm -hmm. sustainable or responsible investing. Yeah, but it's very resonant, I think. It's with very resonant, and so, you know, if the word works, we're happy yeah. to have it. Yeah, so um, a lot of the assets in this field over the years have been obviously in the institutional space, mm -hmm. but more and more, I think individual investors clearly we know are interested, um, particularly younger right. investors and women right. uh, in sustainable investing, sustainable impact investing. Right. Um, for advisors out there, what are some of the challenges to sort of incorporating the idea of sustainability right. into their practices? Well, I think the biggest challenge is that they don't have expertise in this space. 
So as you know, today we're offering a course at Morningstar on the fundamentals of sustainable and responsible investment for advisors and other client-facing professionals so that they can learn the basics of the field. That is the number one challenge. It's why we started the course, because advisors were not getting education on this. And so if they're asked by a client, either the client would go somewhere else to find an advisor who knew about it or would just not do it mm -hmm. because the advisor would say, you know, I just don't know enough about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very big challenge. We have a lot of information on our website, for example, on the basics of sustainable and responsible investing. We have guidebooks on how to invest in climate, for example, for retail investors that mm -hmm. looks at different asset classes you can invest in to address climate. So getting more information, reading more of the voluminous materials that are out there, I think is incredibly important for advisors. I think it's also important to have more retail products. So one of the breakouts we're doing this year at the conference, for example, is on what are the new options for retail investors. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things is that there's several robo-advisors that have started in the last couple of years that are focused on sustainable investment options. I think they're going to get a lot of interest because it gives the retail advisor the ability to do this on their own. Yeah, and I think uh, retail advisors do have a challenge for um, putting together portfolios Absolutely. Uh, and, and having access to some managed accounts, uh, ready-made portfolios. Exactly. Something that advisors as well as just individual investors right. using robots exactly. would, would uh, benefit from. So, Lisa, you've been uh, CEO of US CIF for right. about 10 years now, right. a little over 10 years. How has the field changed? What kind of challenges out there right. do you see today? Well, I always say that even though I've had the same job for 10 years, I feel like I've had three different jobs because when I started, you didn't have groups uh, representing foundations working on mission investing. Mm -hmm. You didn't have the term impact investing. It was still being called socially responsible investing. Mm -hmm. So the wording has changed and developed and, and sort of broadened. Um, the f product availability has broadened. So it really is now much more of a portfolio, a cross-portfolio conversation. Mm -hmm. I think there are more and different products available that interest a broader group of investors, and there are a broader group of investors that are engaged. So what we've seen in the last several years is family offices, high, ne high net worth individuals, foundations, and increasingly pension funds uh, that are being engaged in this investment process. So we've seen a growth in terminology, a growth in um, product and a growth in the type of investors that are entering the space, which are all great developments. Great. Lisa, thanks for being with us today. Sure. Have a great Thank conference. Thank you for having me. Thank you.